Now that you have your colored rivers, we're going to be adding in patterns within the white spaces on your work. I got a jump start on this one, um, but I will have different patterns posted for you in Seesaw, and I also have some packets available if you would like to look at them. If you're more comfortable using your pencil and then tracing it with a Sharpie, you may, but I just went in and used my Sharpie for all my patterns. Remember, patterns are something that repeats. So you're going to pick something that you can repeat over and over again within these sections. I chose in my first one just to do some bumpy lines that overlapped and repeated. Then in one of my small sections, I created some zigzag lines. You can create all different lines that make patterns. So you could do a straight line, then a zigzag, then a straight line, then a zigzag. That's fine. But we are going to really take our time and make sure that we're making these patterns as nice and neat as possible. Remember with our Sharpies, we wanna make sure we're not pushing down hard. We should be barely touching our page with our Sharpies to create nice, neat patterns that show really good craftsmanship on these designs. If you're more comfortable, don't forget, you have your sketchbooks and you can always practice some of these patterns before you get started on your good copy. Just keep in mind that since this is about halfway through the project, we won't be starting over. So if you make a mistake with that Sharpie, just move on and incorporate it into your patterns. I didn't choose to do this in any of my designs, but if you would prefer to color in some of your areas of pattern to add more contrast, you absolutely can do that. Just be very careful not to make any marks on your colored areas of your work. We're only working in these free empty white spaces on your paper. Once each area is filled with pattern, then you're ready to move on to the final step of this project.